Uh, today, uh, the first session is cryptic variation and robustness. And our first speaker is Shing Su Wei. Good morning, everyone. My name is Xin Zhu, and I'm a PhD student from University of Michigan. I'm going to talk about my research project about gene by environment interactions in yeast. Gene environment interaction, in short, G by E, refers to the observation that the same mutation has differential phenotypic effect on a trait in different environments. A historical example of G by E is the black and white moth. G by E is believed to be ubiquitous among all organisms, and it has long been studied by either forward genetics or reverse genetics. It is related to cryptic variation and adaptation, and it is also the basis of personalized medicine. Um, GYE has also been suggested to affect missing heritability. However, the general patterns of GYE is unknown and its um, effect on missing heritability hasn't been quantified. To study the general patterns of G by E, I used a recently published um, yeast data site, which contains 1,005 um, segregants from a cross between two yeast strains, BY and RM, and 47 different conditions were used for growth rate measurement, including different temperatures, different pH, carbon sources, um, as well as addition of metal ions and small molecules. The growth rate of each segregant were, it was measured by colony size, and a total of 28,000 SNPs um, were genotyped by next generation sequencing. So first, um, I used this data set to map the growth rate QTLs, in short, GQTLs, for each single environment. And then I used two different methods to map G by E QTLs. The first one is to use the GQTLs mapped um, from the environment and test whether the GQTLs um, have differential phenotypic effect in two different environments. This method um, resembles the candidate gene study in human. It is a more precise method, and um, this method we call it class one. However, um, if we only test the GQTLs, um, we may miss some GYE sites because some sites could be, um, ha have a um, small effect but it's antagonistic effect in two different environments. So we also use another method to directly map the GYE QTLs that can best explain the growth rate differences between two environments. And we chose um, only the sites on chromosomes without GQTLs. And this method we call it class two because class two is not as accurate as class one. We only use class two to extrapolate the number of G by E missed by class one. And total number of G by E equals to the number of class one plus the extrapolated number of class two. So here are some patterns that um, we observed um, um, from the data, and on x-axis is the two um, environments used, and y-axis is the mean growth rate of um, the segregants um, with each allele. For example, on panel A, um, um, there's, uh, the site is a GQTL in both environments, and it has um, antagonistic effect since the beneficial allele alternates, and it's an uh, antagonistic G by E. And in panel B, um, the same allele has beneficial effect in the two environments, but the effect size is different and it's a concordant G by E. And in panel C, um, that site is only a GQTL in the second environment, but not in the first environment. But it's also a G by E since it has a quite large effect. And in panel D, the site is GQTL in both environments, but the effect size is um, almost the same. It is not a G by E site. And in panel E, um, it's a class two G by E. The site has a um, slightly antagonistic effect in the two environments, but the effect size is small and is not significant enough to be a GQTL. 
So we can use these patterns to um, categorize uh, the GYE sites and the GQTL sites and get some general statistics from this. So the first question I ask is um, what fraction of, um, of GQTLs have differential effects in the two environments? And this is about how general GYE is. And the distri distribution of that is uh, The distribution of that is shown in panel A. And on average, 45% of GQTLs are class one um, GYE QTL, which suggests GYE is very general. And then we ask um, what fraction of GYE could be identified from GQTL representing the percentage of GYE identified from candidate's gene study. And um, we found on average, 87% of GYE could be mapped from GQTL, which strongly supports um, the um, study of candidate genes in human genetics. And later, um, we want to ask uh, some questions about the patterns of antagonistic GYE. And um, first, um, I calculated um, what fraction of class one GYE are antagonistic. And we found on average 28, um, it's shown in panel A, and we found that 20, on average 28% of um, class one GYE is antagonistic, um, which means um, concordant GYE is the dominant one. And then I ask, um, are the probability of antagonistic or not related to the effect size of a site? So um, in panel B, um, the x-axis shown uh, the effect size percentile, and uh, here's small effect and here's large effect. And y-axis shows um, you know, how many other environments um, that, um, that GQTL shows antagonistic effect. And we have a strong pattern, a strong positive correlation between the um, effect size of a mutation and the number of environments that are um, antagonistic, which means large effect mutations are more likely to be antagonistic. And I also studied are there any environments that are more likely to have antagonistic GYE with the other environments. And in the left panel, um, I show the environments that are more than twofold enriched in the no antagonistic um, category. And in the right panel, I show the environments that are more than twofold enriched in the high antagonist category. It seems like um, the environments that yeast could rarely encounter in nature has higher chance of um, being in the high antagonism category, um, which could be these environments are uh, just more dissimilar to the other environments used, or it could be that um, there are some antagonists G by E that are unresolved by natural selection. Um, another question I ask is how much of the environment effect and G by E effect contribute to missing heritability? So because we have 47 different environments and 1,005 segregants, we could artificially mix um, segregants from different environments to represent the um, human population <coughs> that different humans um, have different um, um, environment. And I used two different ways um, to, to mix the, the data. The first way is I addressed mix um, the phenotype data without controlling the environment effect. And um, then just mapped the GQTLs the same method. And the second way I used is I first uh, um, normalized the mean phenotype of each environment and then I mixed the data from two different environments. And this mass, with this way, um, the environment effect is controlled. And um, we also have the um, GQTL mapped from single environment as the third way. And um, missing heritability could come from different components with these three different methods. Um, if we don't control environment effect and just mix the data, then missing heritability could come from environment effect, GYE effect, additive genetics effect, and GYG effect. And um, if we control environment effect, then missing heritability could only, uh, could not come from environment effect. And in a single environment, there is no environment effect, and missing heritability only comes from genetics effect from 
um, plus G by G effect. So compare one and two, we could extrapolate the environment effect and compare two to three, we could extrapolate the G by E effect. Mm -hmm. So I did a uh, two environment mixture, five environment mixture and 10 environment mixture. And um, on the Y axis, I show the average of um, fraction of phenotypic variance explained by the GQTL mapped uh, from the mixed data or single environment data. So if we look at here, um, in the two environment mixture, the G by E effect is the difference between the yellow bar and the orange bar. And an environment effect is the difference between the orange bar and the green bar. And the G by E effect roughly equal to an environment effect in, um, in the missing heritability. And um, as the number of environment increases, and the proportion of um, of um, contribution from G by E effect increases. So this is uh, a strong support that G by E could be the main cause of missing heritability. With the same data, I also asked the question about um, if we only have uh, data that ha from different environments, how accurate is the GQTL mapped from this data? So I calculated the distance between the um, mapped sites in the uh, mixed data to the true QTL mapped from single environment. And I found although um, we only uh, discover a small number of QTLs, most of them are quite accurate. But the chance that a site has concordant effect in a uh, different environment is twice likely uh, than uh, to, to be mapped than a site that has antagonistic effect. So to conclude, uh, most of G by E could be identified from candidate gene study, and the majority of G by E is concordant. And the larger the beneficial effect size, the higher the chance of antagonism. And different environment has different probability of antagonism, which suggests that um, in the study of antagonistic pleiotropy or antagonistic G by E, environment should be carefully chosen. And also G by E causes missing heritability. Um, with this, I first want to thank you all for your attention, and I, I'd like to thank the organizer for the chance to speak. And I wish to thank the Krugak Lab for sharing their data, and thank my advisor, um, Jian Zhi Zhang, for guidance in the last three years. And also thank all my lab mates. Thank you. We have time for questions. So, about the copper results, so both of those strains, the BY and the RM, are really copper resistant. And I'm wondering if you could um, talk about more what you were saying about how they might not be exposed to those uh, for the ones that had a high antagonism, that they not, might not be exposed to these in the environment. What do you really mean by that? Um, sorry, uh, are you asking about? Yes, so that one where you said high antagonism. Um, so f uh, I don't really know about the other ones, but I know for copper, both of those strains are very resistant to copper. Um, yeah, but um, it could be that the copper um, concentration in this, uh, in this uh, experiment is quite high. That is much higher than the um, copper concentration in nature. So. But, they, but they're agricultural isolates, so they've been exposed to a lot of copper before they were brought into the lab. Um, actually, this is, uh, I have to say, this is just a suggestion that it could be that these environments are uh, rare, but uh, we don't really have evidence for that. Okay. So it's either they are very dissimilar to the other uh, environments used in this experiment, or is uh, they are rare, so natural selection doesn't occur. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So if I understood one of your last graphs correctly, you, you had about 40% of the total variance explained yes. by, um, by, your, by your QTLs overall. Um, what about the missing heritability in your own study then? Where, where's the rest of the heritability that's not captured by the QTLs? Do you have an estimate of that? Um, so um, heritability on average is um, 
57% for all the environments, and um, single environment explains almost 40%, and I use a very stringent criteria to map the GQTLs because I want to have low, um, low false positive because I also use the site to um, test um, the enrichment, so it's quite high. 